You know, but many of these churches today are praying unto a God who cannot save. You know, you'll know a church by name and by doctrine. You know, first of all, it's going to say Baptist on the sign. It doesn't right. say Baptist right. on the right. sign on bottom. Good. Second of all, just because it says Baptist on the sign doesn't mean your doctrine is right. That's right. So the first and foremost, the primary thing that you should ask is, what must I do to be saved? And if they say anything other than believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house, if they say anything other than that, you might as well turn around and walk away because right. that yep. Baptist church, so called, is praying to a God who's not saved. You're right. If they say repent of your sins, if they say anything else other than believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a God that cannot save because that's a gospel that cannot save. Yep. True. The Bible makes that very clear. You know, the Catholics. They pervert the gospel. Yep. They pray to a God that cannot save because they have this seven steps to salvation. They have this this you know you got God's grace up here. You got God and His grace and a big like big like you know big like cauldron that He's pouring out. <laughs> you know? This is what He has. He's pouring out His grace on all the world. He wants everybody to get saved, right? Okay, but He's pouring that into a spigot. He's pouring that into a fount a funnel that's going down into a spigot, and you've got a little priest that turns the spigots of grace across. Maybe seven spouts that it goes out. And each of those spouts has a little turning thing that you can turn it on and give that grace. Because it's through the priest that you get that. You know? And then when you're when you're confirmed, when you're baptized, when you get married, when you become a priest, your last rites and all those things are the seven steps of salvation. That's not the gospel. Right, right. That's a whole lot of work. The Bible says there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Right. Not some little priest turning the spirit. That's right. You know, God's grace isn't in a big cauldron. You know, he's just, it, it's his glory, it's his perfection, it's his, it's who God is, it's who Jesus Christ is to be graceful and merciful and long suffering. That's the fruit of the Spirit, who is God. Love, joy, patience, meekness, all those kinds of things. So the Catholics pray to a God that cannot save because they're just going about it the wrong way, through the yep. spigot system, as I call it. The Methodists have this thing called sanctifying grace, where salvation is a process throughout your whole entire lifetime. And when you get saved, if, you know, salvation is genuine, you will continue. And it will be the sanctifying grace. That if you're captured by the grace of God, that that grace will also force you to live right and do right. It's, it's Calvinism, even though they deny Calvinism. But Methodists are Calvinists. Yeah. You know, that's just simple logic there and thinking about that. The Presbyterians, God picks and chooses, force of salvation, takes out belief in the entire condition of salvation. That's a God that cannot save. Right. The Pentecostals believe you must repent of your sins and live a good life to be saved. That's a God that cannot save right there. Right. The Mormons believe you are saved by grace through faith after all that we can do. 2 Nephi 25, 23, if you ever want to look it up in the Book of Mormon. That's what it says. That's a God that cannot save right there. The Jehovah's Witnesses say, this is a quote from the Watchtower magazine of March 1st, 1983, uh, that under an article called Clean and Active Worship by James Urges. It says, Faith that does not prompt us to do good works is not genuine and will not result in our salvation. So the Jehovah's Witnesses, a God that cannot save, they don't even believe that Jesus Christ is God. They don't even believe Hebrews 1 8, where it says, But under the Son he said, Thy throne, O God. You know, God is talking to Jesus Christ. He's talking to the Son, and he's saying, Thy throne, O God. He says, You created, I was created all things. You know, and all those things in that chapter, in that passage, they deny that and say that Jesus is just a created being. That's a God that cannot save right there. The, the Church of the Nazarene was started by Phineas Greasy, and he was a former Methodist minister who wanted to see the church return to a ministry of serving poor and homeless people. So the Nazarene is nothing more than a Methodist church. Yep. It's just a sect of it. It's just, a, it's just an offspring of it. The Southern Baptists say you must repent of your sins to be saved. The Episcopalians change a few things to make themselves not look Catholic, but they're still Catholic. Yep. They all pray into a God that cannot save these great steeples, these great, good-looking, you know, marvelous-looking cathedrals with the stained glass windows and the big paintings and the big statues. You've been in Catholic churches before. Have you ever been in a Catholic church? Don't go. No? Okay, well, don't go. But if you ever went, <laughs> they, have, they have these beautiful things all around any Catholic uh, sanctuary or whatever that I've ever been. And you've got different different stages of the Gospels and different things portrayed all around the room. You know, it might be fun to look at, but it's nothing but a it's nothing but an angel of light nope. in that room. It's nothing but satanic wickedness going on. Because they're praying into a God that cannot save. You know, and I'm not a Baptist tonight because I was raised in a Baptist church. I'm a Baptist tonight, not because it's cool to be a Baptist. <laughs> you know? It's not cool to believe the Bible. It's not cool to, you know, be against big government and society and, and all this kind of stuff. It's not cool to be like that, so I'm not a Baptist just so I can get a ton of girlfriends. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a Baptist tonight because we pray into a God that can't save. Amen. We go to a church that believes in soul winning. 
Right. Because our God can save. We go to a church that believes the Bible because these words give life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay. We go to a church that believes that, and therefore we go to a church that prays unto a God that can't save. Right. Right. Yeah. The Bible makes these things very clear, and in our own personal life, they preach hard. They believe the Bible from cover to cover. They're against sin. They're against the wickedness of this world. And that's why I'm a Baptist tonight, because it's the right thing to do. It said there, what was one of the first verses we read in uh, Isaiah 45, said, I, the Lord, speak righteous. I declare things that are right. Therefore, we need to find a church that declares things that are right. It's good. Praise the Lord, we have one. Amen. I was talking Amen. to a friend of mine down at, a friend of ours down in Florida, and he's just struggling. Like, you wouldn't believe, because there's no there's no good church in his area. He's going to this liberal church. He's struggling getting people who are not soul winning with him. He's debating the King James Bible, which is just a wearisome subject to debate with somebody who's perhaps not even saved to begin with or is so brainwashed in their Bible college dogma that they can't see the light of day and reason that the Word of God has to be the Word of God. You know, that's frustrating stuff to go to. Thank God we have this group of friends that pray to a God who can't save. Amen. Thank God that we don't have to, to, to intermeddle with these kinds of people that, that blaspheme the Word of God, that blaspheme Jesus Christ, and go and correct it and go and say that it's not right and that it's not pure and that it's just a dead carcass of a book laying on the pulpit right there. We've got a group of people, we've got a church that says we pray to a God that can save. That's the kind of people to get yoked up with. That's the kind of people to go with in this life. Amen. We need to yoke up and walk together and do great things for God because He can save. Amen. If only we would work on His behalf. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear God, I just thank you so much tonight for, for saving me and everybody else in this room because God, you are able to save and you can save. And I just, you know, I feel bad for these people that pray and, and work hard and and um, just criticize and scoff for it. You know, some of them reprobate, most of them not, though. And they just need to get saved and just help us in our zeal for soul winning, help us to stay on fire with it, even as the days get shorter and the weather gets colder, Lord. Help us to ignite that fire every single day and witness to people and be active in that, Lord, because we want everybody to pray to a God that can save. We want everybody to get saved, Lord, just like you do. Just help us in that and be with us in Jesus' name.